West. I'm here today joined with my book buddies. Say hi, book buddies. Hello. Uh, we have Ms. Bell, Ms. Oborowski, Mr. Mason, Ms. Goldberg, and Ms. Eig. Um, we all came together because we wanted to share an amazing book with you. This book is called A Door Made for Me by Tyler Merritt. This book had such an amazing impact on all of us, and we wanted to make sure that we shared it with all of you. Um, so as we go along, we're going to stop and think about different parts of the book, process it together, and think as a group. We hope that you'll do something similar when you read it as a class as well. Um, so without further ado, I will share my screen and take you through a door made for me. This book deals with empathy, which is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. I watched our house with its bright blue door get smaller and smaller as we drove away. I didn't want to spend the summer at my grandparents' house. I didn't know anyone there. What would I do? Who would I play with? Mom said it would all work out. But I didn't believe her until I met Jack. Oh, I wonder if that's Jack on that page. Oh, it is. Jack and I spent our time outside, only heading in to eat and sleep. Mostly we hunted for night crawlers and fished in the river. I had never fished before, and I'd never hunted worms. I wasn't interested in touching any critter known for crawling out of the ground at night. But Jack showed me they weren't so bad. Usually we only caught a few fish, but one day we caught three bucketfuls. You're eating really good at this, Jack beamed. As the sun started to go down, we scooped our buckets up and headed home. When we got to our road, Jack walked right by. Where are you going, I asked. Do you see how many fish we caught? We've got to show everybody. Come on, he said. It won't take long. I shrugged and followed along. I can't believe how many fish they caught. That's so crazy. Look how excited and happy they look. I know. I can't wait to see what all their neighbors say. I love the part where Jack was beaming at how many fish Tyler caught because that shows me that he was a really good friend and he was proud of his friend. He, they weren't competitive. They just were happy for each yes. other. They were doing it together. Oh, no. I love it. Let's see what happens next. We went house to house, knocking on doors and asking if Jack's friends could come out. At the first house, a large man told us Jack's friend couldn't come out as the door quickly closed. Hmm. The second house was the same. We couldn't go in and no one came out. Suddenly, my stomach was doing flips. What's going on, I wondered. Why won't Jack's friends come outside? That's weird. Do you see their faces? <laughs> Look at the woman in the door. Her arms are crossed as if she's almost angry. I wonder why they won't let the friends come out to play and to see all those fish. They don't know him. He's They're missing out. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the next one lets them. We figured we'd try one last time. We walked up to a house with a beautiful wooden door. I knocked and we waited patiently until creak. The door swung open slowly. A woman towered above us, frowning. Another adult, I thought, and she doesn't look happy. I wonder why all these adults are so unhappy every time they open the door. Jack asked if his friend could come out. The woman shook her head and pointed at Jack. You can come in, Jack, she said, but not that little black boy. He needs to stay outside. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. How does that make you feel reading that, you guys? It makes hearing that um, just makes my whole body feel very unsettling. Um, I can feel my stomach flipping. Um, it just makes me feel almost kind of sick to hear something like that. Mm -hmm. It makes me extremely sad. And just looking at Tyler's face, he just looks shocked and just doesn't understand, you know, how that could be said and why he can't go in just because he's black. He just looks extremely disappointed. And I feel that for him. 
I've never had someone say that to me, but I've had other things happen, so I can really empathize with how he feels being a black person. I think this is. I think Mrs. Bell saying the word shock, that was my initial reaction. I felt almost frozen, like hard to swallow. I, I couldn't believe, I, I had, a, when Mrs. West read that, I had to read it for myself because I thought I was hearing things wrong. This makes you wonder why she has to point out that he is black and why he isn't just a little boy and why she is encouraging um, Jack to come in when they didn't ask to come in. They just wanted to, to show off their fish. But exactly. she said he could come in and Little black boy couldn't just it, makes you wonder why. It I I feel shocked. I felt so shocked even just to read that quote. You can come in, Jack, she said, but not that little black boy. He needs to stay outside. That just feels it's not even just doing flips in my stomach, but it just feels so heavy, even just to say those words. I can't even imagine how Jack felt feeling like he was being left outside. By somebody who doesn't even know him. Yeah, it makes you wonder how can you hate somebody you don't even know them? She doesn't, she yeah. doesn't know Tyler. And then when they open the door, they're clearly happy and smiling and right. friends. So right. if she would welcome Jack in and be so able to just keep Tyler out, it's it was shocking for me. I also wonder what Jack's gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. Look at their faces. There's a lot of expression and confusion and I mean, I look at their eyebrows. I look at the look of hurt in their eyes. Mm -hmm. I look at the sad face of Tyler's expression. Jack looks confused and Tyler just looks really like shocked and sad. Hurt and hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's read and see what happens. I felt all the air leave my body as Jack walked inside to show off the fish we had caught together. I'll be right back, he promised. The door shut tight behind Jack, followed by the loudest lock I had ever heard. I can't believe Ugh. he went in. I I turned and left my share of the fish baking in the sinking sun. Oh my gosh. I felt the air leave my body. He said, that's how Tyler said he felt too. I felt the same way, Miss Goldberg, when he went inside. I can't believe he went, that's not what a friend would do. Oh. Gosh, and I'm sure Tyler is just feeling very hurt and just disappointed and maybe alone because his friend that he's, you know, spent the summer, the summer with, they're getting to know each other. They caught all these fish and they are so happy that he's not supporting him. Um, but maybe Jack just doesn't know what to do at that moment. Mm. I think he probably doesn't because he even said that quote, I'll be right back. He promised. Like, obviously, I feel like in, in his heart, he felt like he knew he was doing something wrong, um, but maybe just didn't know how how to go between both sides. I think we've all been both kids and adults in situations where something did not feel right or we knew somebody was being wronged and we didn't, we knew it was wrong, but we didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if um, Jack will have the opportunity to hear Tyler's side of his story. Yeah, it's really the difference between being a bystander and an upstander. Yeah, Tyler was really happy when he caught the fish, and he's so upset now and hurt that he just left his whole bucket of fish behind. Yeah, I'm sure he was going to be very excited to show off those fish to everybody, and mm -hmm. now he just doesn't even want to have the fish around to show off to anybody. And we want to believe that adults do the right thing, but this was an adult who didn't know a child. Yeah. Made a choice, and so many adults well. earlier right. in this yeah. book that yeah. didn't do the right thing. Yeah. That line, I felt all the air leave my body. I feel like the author is really showing, like, just how deflated he felt, like yeah. dejected. Um, this is a true story, right? Yeah, yeah, this is based on Tyler when he was actually a young child there with his family. Oh my gosh! All right, let's see what happens next. I couldn't stop thinking about the slam of the door and the click of the lock. I had already walked through lots of doors, the glass double doors of my school, the bright blue one at my house, and the impossibly heavy one at my grandparents' place. I didn't understand why. Why had this door slam shut at the sight of me? That's, that's really what you guys were talking about, just 
they, she knows nothing about Tyler. Mm -hmm. He could be the best person in the world or the worst person in the world. She would have no idea. All of these people keep slamming the door just because he's black. So she's not even giving herself a chance to get to know him Mm -hmm. at all. She's just turning him away, just looking at him and deciding he can't come in just because of how he looks. Mm -hmm. And also she closed the door so that her son, because they went over there to see her child. So her child never got the chance to see what these boys were so excited about or meet Jack's new friend yeah, and possibly have a really good relationship or friendship. All the things with, that are missed yes. out on when you close the door on someone. How do you feel like Tyler felt too, just thinking about the fact that none of these people knew him, but that they felt like something was so wrong with how he looked mm-hmm. that they would shut the door and just keep keep them keep him out of their house. I think beyond hurt, really confused because I, it never says this in the book, but I get the feeling this might be the first experience he's had at racism. Yeah. And it makes me wonder about all the kids in our school and if they've had any experiences like this. Mm-hmm. Adults shouldn't make judgments on children. Mm-hmm. Um, just goes to show you that when an adult makes a decision that it can be really impactful and probably will be a, a lasting feeling with with Tyler and Mm -hmm. something that he may never trust an adult ever again. And he didn't do anything wrong except for being black, which Mm -hmm. isn't wrong. And there's nothing nothing wrong. They should make a judgment about him just because of his skin color. He didn't do anything wrong except knock on the wrong door. (laughs) And, and inter, I mean, and he is seeing the face of racism and that's what it is. Like, I think it's really important that you said that word because it is racist. Mm -hmm. They're judging someone based on the color of their skin or no, nothing about the substance of who he is as a person or his character or what he brings to the world. Gosh, I'm just, I'm like overwhelmed with sadness. Let's read and see what he does. When I walked into the house, I sat down on the floor. Grandpa sat beside me. What's wrong, he said. I told him the whole story. He shook his head. I wish this didn't still happen, especially not to you, Tyler. But why did it, I asked him. How can she hate me when she doesn't know me? That's exactly what we were saying. Grandpa sighed. I wish I knew. In life, he said, there are many doors, but some people don't want to see us walk through them. It can be for any reason, the way you're dressed, the twists and curls of your glorious hair, or even the beautiful mahogany of your skin. It won't make sense. You might feel angry or sad, and that's okay. But remember, sweet boy, you are loved. Sorry, guys. You are loved and you are perfect just as you are. Another person's hate doesn't change that. You'll find a door that's right for you. And when you do, be sure to leave it open for the next kid struggling to get in. Mm. That one always chokes me up when I read it. I think it's just, I think it's so important to have that family. And I think about my own children and all, I have two children at home, but I have 777 children here. And gosh, I just, I hope that you all know that we would embrace you in that same way if you experience something like this. And it's extremely important, Katie, like you're saying, to have that support system. Um, It can be with your parents, it can be here at school, but you need, when you're experiencing something like this, Mm -hmm. you need to have someone there to say to you, you are valued. We care about you. We love you. No matter what anyone says about you or judging you because of the color of your skin, you don't need to listen to that. You are worthy. You matter and you are enough. And you need to have that guy and someone to help you through that, especially when you're this young, because that's something really heavy to have to learn how to handle. And then you want someone there to let you know you're important because then you start to see yourself as um, that's something's wrong with you. And there's nothing no. wrong with Tyler at all. He has nothing to apologize for. I have nothing to apologize for for being Black. And I'm glad that yeah. I have a support system still to this day because there's racism that still happens that lets me know that I am a beautiful Black woman in this world and I belong and Tyler belongs as a beautiful young Black boy. 
and his grandfather and his family are there to help him through that. I that love necessary. I, I, I loved what you said about feeling like there is nothing wrong. I would even say you're loved, not in spite of the fact that you are black or white or Asian, Hispanic, whatever your color of your skin looks like, or what your hair is like, or the clothes that you wear, or the car that you drive, you're loved because of it. We have this amazing diversity. It's our best trait as a school. Every single room you walk into, you'll see people that look different, that believe in different things, that whose families are different or whose clothes are different. That's what makes it so wonderful here. And it's so heartbreaking to feel like Tyler felt like there, that was something that made that was not good about him because that's one of the best things about him. And I'm so glad he had someone who loved him to show him that he is valued. I love the words the author uses to describe how beautiful he is mm-hmm. by talking about the curls of his glorious yeah. hair and the um, beautiful mahogany of his skin. I think she used really beautiful descriptive words. Yeah. When we talk about obedum and having each other's back um, and being able to identify who you think has your back, that's an, a really a really important piece because Tyler knew right in that moment, mm-hmm. even though he was shocked and confused by what happened at the door, he knew exactly where to go. Yeah. He went right home to his grandfather, even if it meant leaving all those fish behind. Mm-hmm. He went straight to his grandfather because he knew his grandfather had his back. Yeah. And his grandfather probably experienced many mm-hmm. episodes, um, instances of racism and knew how to deal with mm-hmm. it. And as he's gotten older, he's gotten a lot wiser on how to comfort his family yeah. Uh, probably his children and his grandchildren, especially here in this book. And Tyler is going to be better for it because of his grandfather's comfort and action and love and words. Um, mm-hmm. The description of his skin, his hair, you know, we, we celebrate our differences and, and not look down upon each other because we are different. I loved what he said, too. He made a comment. I hate that this is still happening. Mm-hmm. And I think that. I think that really paints the picture of the fact that this making racist, racially driven or racial or racist comments, it's not something that's new in this world, which is so sad to think about it really, about how this is a part where people, where his grandfather clearly experienced it. Maybe his parents experienced it and he's so sad to hear that he's experiencing it now too. Um, But he makes this comment Another person's hate doesn't change that. You'll find a door that's right for you. And when you do, be sure to leave it open for the next kid struggling to get in. Um, And I think just in working with kids, one of the most important things that we always say is when we say you guys are our future, we mean it. You get to change the world. You don't have to wait until you're someone's grandpa to have a conversation with them, to be an upstander, to be, to, to believe in a vetoum and have someone's back. You get to change it now. You get to interrupt these terrible comments. Maybe next time you're standing at a door, you'll be sure that you don't walk through the door like Jack did in this book, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe next time when you see something wrong like this, you'll stand up. And I think that's really the hope. I think we got to make sure that we're leaving the door open. The door is really a symbol of opportunity. And when we close doors to people, we're closing off their opportunities. We're closing off our own. Right. I also think it's a really good class discussion. The question of, of Jack and what he should have done. Yeah. Or if you were in Jack's position and you latently obviously heard a racist comment not just about your friend but about another human yeah what would you do what is the right thing to do so i wonder what happens next let's see do the boys stay friends do they never talk to each other again what happens yeah let's read and look i kept on catching fish that summer and grandpa taught me how to clean them and fry them up i was still sad about the woman who slammed her door in my face and I missed playing with Jack. He came by once to see if I wanted to catch night crawlers together. I told him no. I didn't hate Jack, but it was hard to stay friends after that, after what he did. Grandpa told me not to give up on Jack. He said, I know it hurts, but he's still learning. 
I think he'll be a better friend someday. I hoped he was right. I I can't say I blame him for not wanting to be Jack's friend anymore. No, but I think childhood is a time that I really hope kids can learn from their mistakes. And this one's particularly hard because it's the adult first who really made the first big, big mistake. And yeah. even though we all agree that what Jack did was wrong, he is a child. And I hope that somebody did take that opportunity to say, Jack, you could have stood up for your friend. That's you right. could have gone with Tyler. I also think that was the third door that got slammed on them also. So it seems to be the norm in that neighborhood. So when he was faced with that, maybe to him, that wasn't anything out of the ordinary. And I think, That's uh, I love this book, but I think what it was missing was a discussion with the boys. Because yeah. I agree with the side. I think everything is a teachable moment. And I would love to see them talk and, and see how each one was impacted and what they can do in the future to understand each other better. Yeah, because it says that Jack came by once. But that's not trying hard if he just came by once and it didn't say that he came by at all to have a discussion or to even apologize for not standing by his friend and knowing Mm -hmm. right from wrong. Mm -hmm. So Jack may not have anyone at home that Mm -hmm. can help him process the situation or let him know what he did was, you know, wrong in Tyler's eyes and very hurtful and upsetting. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have someone there, again, like I was saying, to guide you or to help you, then how do you know what to do the next time? Yeah. How are you not going to make that that same mistake the next but time? But I think right? when you see the hurt on a friend, we know. you know you know that something is wrong. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe you know, but not everybody. And it's also maybe it was in, what if he was in school? Maybe if he was in school during that time and he had friends to help him see the other perspective, or if he had counselors or teachers, like all of you, principals, hopefully assistant principals, to help him show show Jack that the hurt that he did cause, even though maybe he didn't start the hurt, he did continue it when he went inside. I, I wonder if because this story took place, the setting was in the summer, maybe if the setting was during the school year and it took place at school, it would have had a different outcome. I'd be interested in classes if um, students would ask each other, have you ever had a time that something happened, you didn't know what to do, and you wish, thinking back on it now, you would have done something more, right? Mm -hmm. Was there a missed opportunity to stand up for someone? Yeah. Yeah. Just wondered, I wonder what Jack's parents are like. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't. Yeah. When we're born, we're not born racist. We, we learn those exactly. behaviors. So exactly. has this happened before? And was his parents not there to support him? Uh, probably well, yeah. if they were, yeah. then he wouldn't act like that. Also wonder what. I totally agree. So we're, we're not born to, to hate or not like somebody or treat somebody bad. We're not born racist. Uh, those, those behaviors are learned. And if you have somebody at home that's teaching you how to respect and love and care for other people, then you know Jack probably didn't have that at home. He may not right. have walked in. He probably would have walked away with, with Tyler. And I also wonder how grandpa is in the neighborhood. Has he knocked on those doors? And they've shut the doors in their face. So they're, they're really just not giving people an opportunity to, to help them learn more about what life is really about and that we all, all are welcome at all right. times. I totally agree. Let's see what happens at the end. Not a lot of doors opened for me that summer. It wasn't right and it wasn't fair, but I knew there were more doors waiting just around the corner. I could find a door for me. I'd open it myself and hold it wide open for whoever wanted to come in. Oh, I I think that just like underscores the end of hope. You know, I, it's like, it's not sometimes in books, I really feel like we look for this really happy, perfect ending. We get to tie it up with a bow, everything's fixed. And I don't feel like there was like a solution. It's still a sad ending, but, but it doesn't feel totally sad, right? Yeah, I think Tyler took some power to say, yes, this was a sad situation, but I'm not going to treat people the way I was just treated. I'm going to treat them the way I want to be he rose above. He learned from it. Yeah, you know, he had an awful situation. Mm-hmm. And he learned that it's better to open doors than to close them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was important that his grandfather told him, 
that it's okay for you to have these feelings, for you to process yeah. that. And he was able to work through all of it. He was angry. He was mm -hmm. sad. He was upset. And it was okay to feel that way because he was trying to process it. Mm -hmm. And once he was able to get through that, he decided, you know what? I'm going to hold the door open for others. So no mm -hmm. one has to really, if they're feeling something that I'm feeling that, that I felt, then I'm going to help them through that because I know what they were going through. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to help them the yeah. way my grandfather helped me. Mm -hmm. I like, I noticed the author put these different um, parts of text in different sizing. I really like how he, he said I'd open it myself. And that was really big. Yeah. I felt like that was like empowering. I took it back. Um, instead of feeling hopeless, he, there was a sense of hopeful, like mm -hmm. he was going to, he was going to help fix it himself. And I think that's really such a message in this book is we're not just going to sit by. We're not just going to do nothing. We're we're going to stand up. He's going to stand up. And I I get a feeling that he's not just going to wait by for this to happen to his kids or his grandkids, um, but that he's going to take action to make sure that these patterns and that these doors that are keeping getting slammed, um, that fewer and fewer doors are being closed in other kids, students of color, or um, based on the color of their skin or the clothes that they wear or the religion that they believe in, whatever it is, it just, it makes me feel like he's going to do something. And I feel like that mm -hmm. overwhelming sense of hope at the end. And we all do better when doors are open for everyone, right? It yeah. helps everybody. Mm -hmm. We show them kindness and we show them love and just that we're there, which yeah. goes back to our whole school motto of all are welcome. Yeah. yeah. I really feel like we say that so often. And I think, and, and it is truly like in building this school has been a cornerstone. It is everything to us. When we say all are welcome, we genuinely mean everything that you do. I hope that you do it in a way that makes everyone feel welcome. Every time you're in a circle, I hope that you widen that circle and let people in, welcome them in to knowing you, to knowing the value and the beauty and the courage and the strength that is each of you, you know? And I think, I think that this is one of those things where when you see and you will see um, if you see someone shrinking that circle, if you see someone holding someone out or closing a door in someone's face, I hope that you'll be courageous enough to not just be a bystander, but like someone said, to be an upstander, to do something, to take action and support one another. Because we, we are the adults, we sit by and we hope that we teach you just like we hope that you have families that you go home to that are loving and there for you and support you and teach you too. Um, but really you guys get to be the change. We all can create this change together. So I hope that everything that you do, you're taking steps towards making all feel welcome. Um, and that brings us to the next part of this activity, which is going to be, you're going to take time as a class to, um, to use your, what you've learned and the conversations you've had around your experiences and who you are, um, and design a door. So you're going to read more about that in this slideshow. We're really, really excited as we throw it from one grade to the next. And as we travel all around the building for, to be able to see who are we, as Bayard Rustin, who are we as Red Foxes, as students? That's what bonds us. That's what brings us together. What about our beautiful diversity that makes us unique, that makes us special? Um, and we want you to just to leave with remembering the differences are the things that make us great. So if you ever see someone who is using someone else's differences and using that as a reason to shut them out, to close the door, uh, be the person that opens the door, be the person that reaches the hand out and that helps the person up and that creates a warm and caring space for them. And we hope we'll always be that for you too. Love you, Red Foxes. <laughs>